Hey everybody, welcome back to Home Recording Made Easy.com and here on my YouTube channel. And this time out, we're gonna take a look again at another plugin by Waves. This is the new CLA Epic Delay and Reverb Combo plugin. Now there's lots of plugin, lots of videos I should say already out on this plugin and there's a ton of features in this and it could look a little bit overwhelming to someone, but there's a couple of really unique things, a lot of unique things about this plugin. And one reason that I really like it, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. But before we get to that, if you like what you see in this video, hit that subscribe button. Also, if this is your first time here, I wanna welcome you to our home recording made easy dot com family i want to give you a free gift go out to home recording made easy dot com and i want to give you a free mixing course it's right on the home page home recording made easy dot com links are in the description box below and if you're on the website and you want to check out my other training courses and you find something that interests you i want to give you a 25 percent discount coupon code that coupon code is youtube 25 you use that at checkout it'll take 25 percent off any one of the training courses again all the links are in the description box below so make sure you check that out as well so here we are in uh, studio one here we're gonna take a look at this cla epic now um first thing i thought when this first came out now they they put out a free version at, around black friday of uh, 2020 depending on when you're watching this um, called the CLA Echoes Fear, I think it was called, which I downloaded, which is really a mini version of this. Um, and then this came out about a week later, and this was $29 on sale, which is worth $29 all day long. But um, you may be saying to yourself, and I kind of ask myself this as well, do we need another delay and another reverb plugin? I mean, I have lots of great delays, lots of great reverbs. But what really interests me with the CLA Epic is the way it's kind of blended together. And this solves kind of a, not a problem, but makes things more convenient for someone like me um, who uses, especially on lead vocals, um, the way I would typically set up a lead vocal effect chain is I would have four separate buses. I would have a delay sent into a room reverb, sent to a plate reverb, sent to a hall reverb. And the lead vocal track, I would use those as sends or as auxes. And then I would blend them together. And that's how I would kind of do a basic lead vocal, you know, chain for effects without having it sound too washy and sound like you dropped a bunch of reverb and delay on it. Give it a more natural, a little bit fatter sound with a little bit of space, but it's not so obvious. It's done in a very subtle way. I have several videos on the YouTube channel showing that. You can search my archive after this video. Um, what this does is this kind of does, well, this does the same thing in one plugin that I would do manually. So the way this plugin is kind of laid out, we're not going to go through every single little nuance and feature here because there's already 50 videos on YouTube that show you that. What I want to do is show you how I use it, give you a listen to it, and then I'll let you know at the end of the video, do I recommend something that you may want to check out? So on the left hand side here, we have, uh, the tape side here, four different, or excuse me, four different delays here in blue. Um, next to that, four different reverbs in red. And um, we have, if we start on the right, on to the left of that, we have the input meter here at the top left-hand corner. Underneath that, we have our mute buttons. Now, um, what is a little bit different about this, in case you don't know, is that when, you, um, when the button is, is lit up, it means it's in mute mode. When it's not lit up, it means it's enabled which is kind of the opposite. You would think, well, when it lights up, it's working. When it's not light, lit up, it doesn't work. No, it's the exact opposite of that. So you have your four mute switches for your four delays and your four reverbs next to that. You have an input uh, fader here as well. And then when we get to the delay section here, again, we have four different types of delays here. The first one, if we click on the bottom here on one is a tape delay. We have, um, you can see what it is here. You can uh, add some modulation here as well to kind of emulate or the way um, the tape heads kind of add a little bit of wow and flutter to it. You can do that with the modulation here. Um, and then underneath this, you have a, a, a tape one and tape two and um, set up different milliseconds. You can change the time here. You can sync it on and off to your DAW if you'd like to. You can change the, the, uh, the notes here. Uh, or the uh, you could change the time signature here, so we can go eighth notes here. Um, and as you change that, you'll see above there, the milliseconds will change, obviously. So you can change all of that here. Here we go, on both sides here. You can offset the two here if you'd like to by a certain percentage. Underneath that, you have our routing for each one of these things. So this is what makes this a little bit interesting. And the way Chris Lord Algae, I guess, works is he has um, all his hardware of, uh, reverb and delay units that are patched into his SSL console, and they live permanently on certain faders. And his settings on his 
hardware units, I guess are kind of a set it and forget it kind of a thing. And that's what they tried to do here. They tried to emulate those hardware units and the settings that Chris kind of uses. And then he kind of blends them together uh, during the song, different, 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 different sections of the song, so on and so forth. So under the routing section here, like for the example, we have um, uh, channel one here or delay number one, which is the tape. It could go to A, B, C, or D. And when you press them in, that will go to the reverb. So for example, this one is going to the first reverb, the second reverb, and the third reverb, this particular delay. Okay, and it's also going to the output fader. Now you can click those on and off, and if you say, well, I only want the first delay going to the first reverb, for example, you can do that. And you can, so you can choose which routings you have for each one of these, okay? This particular preset that I'm on um, only has the first delay being used. The second, third, and fourth, as you can see, is off. The second one is a throw, the third is a slap, and the fourth is a crowd. And each one of those have some different parameters of what you can change for the settings here. Again, times, the crowd has some tightness and some width to make it sound wider. The, the throws, again, you can change all of that. And again, you can go watch a bunch of other YouTube videos where they're gonna dive down deep through every single setting. We're not gonna do that here. Okay, so there's the routing section of it. Now also, if you were to click on the routing, you also have these little faders that you can turn up or down. So you could even um, change the amount, the send level. Like in this example, it's going to reverb A, B, C, and D. Well, if you don't want them in equal amounts and you wanna change that, you can kind of do this which is kind of neat, okay? So there's a lot of control. I guess what I'm trying to say is there's a lot of control here. And some would say, maybe there's too much control. There's too much detail. You just want to get something real quick and easy. I'm going to talk to you about that in a second. And we're going to listen to it on a, on a snare, on a lead vocal, and on an acoustic guitar so you can hear how it sounds. So that's the delay section. Again, you have high pass and low pass filters here. You have solo and mute buttons and faders. Pretty standard. Let's move over to the reverbs. Same thing. A is a plate reverb. B is a room reverb, C is a hall reverb, and D is a space reverb, okay? Um, and you can see that um, in this particular preset that I've set up here, um, all the, the first three reverbs are enabled, the fourth one is turned on and it's muted, and that's the space reverb. This happens to be on a, um, what track is this thing? And this is on our vocal, okay? Okay, and then you have a lot of the same controls here. You have the plates, you can have modulation added, you can change the pre-delay, you can change the reverb time, you can do all of that stuff here, okay? And then after that, you have our, our mix wet dry. I'm using them as sends right now on separate channels, so it's 100% wet, but you can also use it as an insert. You can kind of blend them together 50-50 or however you want to do that. And then you have your output fader and you have your output meter pretty standard. Um, some people have asked me about the new Waves, version 12 of the Waves plugins, all the Waves plugins, just so you know, because some people have already asked me this in other videos. If you click next to the save, this little menu, you can resize the windows, which you could not do in prior versions of Waves plugins, which is really nice. This is only in version 12 Waves plugins. So if your plugins by Waves or any other version prior to 12, you can't do that. This is a version 12 update, which I find very, very handy for an old guy like me who has a hard time seeing some of the, some of the detail on these interfaces. Okay, so that's how it's set up. So now, one thing that I really like about this, because there is so much control and you could spend a ton of time monkeying around with this stuff to try to get it to sound just the way you want. And you may think, well, that's a little complicated. I just want something that sounds good. Well, have no fear. What I really love about this and what really turned me on to this plugin was more than that I could now blend my re my delays into my reverbs, just like I said I used to do manually with a delay, send, a room, a plate, and a hall. I've kind of simulated that right here. I have one delay turned on. I have my tape delay going into a plate, a room, and a hall, just like I would have had on four separate buses, four separate aux tracks I can do all inside of one plugin. But what's really great is the presets in this thing are really awesome. It's, it seems like that Waves and Chris Lord Algae working together spent a lot of time developing very, very usable presets right out of the box that you can tweak. That's one of the downfalls I find about a lot of plugins, especially third-party reverbs and delays. A lot of times the presets aren't very usable. One exception to that that I've always said for years is the Slate Digital Verb Suites Classic Reverb is another one that has wonderful usable presets right out of the box. You don't need to spend a lot of time futzing around in here. 
okay? Because there is a lot of control here. And if you just want something that sounds good, you can pick a preset. And I have done that here and tweaked it. And then I named it, saved it as my own preset. So I came over here to CLA and they also have a bunch of artist presets, tons of artist presets. Um, and you can see that all the different artists here and they label their preset, whether they used it as an insert or ascend, as you can see here, uh, deep throw, uh, vocal send. See, this is this this preset was was put was set up like an aux, like I have it here. Or if it doesn't say the word send, you put it on in on as an insert. Okay, and you can go through all of those. But basically, what I did is went to the CLA preset. I picked nice vocal one, and then I tweaked it. And this is what I kind of and tweaked it, meaning all I really did was turn down the the amount that was there. So let, let's listen to what this sounds like. So here is on a vocal track, a lead vocal. I'm going to solo this up, and again, it's being routed as a send over to this reverb track here. And this is the reverb, the delay into three reverb sound. Where will my heart come back to life? I'm alright. As I pick up the pieces that I left in me, I'm all right. Be away from you. Okay, no reverb. And I'll be fine. Completely dry. Cleaning out the corner, putting back in order. But no, I will always have this too. A little piece of you. Okay, so that's a tape delay going into a plate, a room, and a hall, just like I would normally set it up. Okay, my fader down here, you'll see down here in blue, it says reverb, that's for the lead vocal. I have it set at zero dB. The send level that I'm sending from the lead vocal track is set pre-fader to zero dB, oops. And that's what's coming into the CLA Epic. And then basically what I did, I started with all the faders down because the preset will set all the faders at zero. And when you put it on as a send and you turn this up to 100% wet, it's way too much. So I turned all the faders down and I just raised them up to the appropriate level. Now this particular preset only has one delay. So I want to lower that. I know the season's ripe for change. It's changing all around. I know the reasons you've arranged. Now, the reason why you don't hear anything when I turn down that delay is because you can see in the routing, it's being routed to the three reverbs and it's also being routed to the output. So that means I need to turn this up a little bit so I can hear some of the reverb. The dead rim me down. Where is the peacefulness of mine? And then we could do it in the context of a mix. Where will my heart come back to life? I'm all right. As I pick up the pieces that I left in me, I'm all right. Okay, where it blends in nice. It sounds like it's a little much in solo, but in the track it sounds really good. So we solo this up again. Put him back in order, but no, I will always have this too. So if I just want to listen to one of the verbs, this is the plate. A little piece of you. I know the season's ripe for change. It's changing all around. I know the reasons you've arranged. Oh, gotta unsolo this, sorry, or unmute that. The dead rim me down. Where is the peacefulness of mine? So there's just the tape delay. Where will my heart come back to life? And there's the plate. I'm all right. As I pick up the pieces that I left in me, I'm all right. Here's the room. Be away from you. And I'll be fine. Cleaning out the corner, putting back in order. But no, I will always have this too. A little piece of you. Here's the hall. I know the season's ripe for change. It's changing all around. I know the reasons you've arranged. The dead rim me down. Where is the peacefulness of mine? Where will my... Okay, so that's how quickly you can just dial something in. Again, all I do is just, I'm simulating exactly what I used to do manually with four separate plugins. I'm doing it all inside of one. And I just picked the preset, tweaked it, and then I saved the preset, and you can save it, um, put the preset into the menu as, and I called it Dave's Basic Vocal 1, is what I called it. You can see it up here, Dave's Basic Vocal 1. And now I have it in the menu. If I go to load, you'll see right down here, Dave's basic vocal. So now I have that all in one plugin, which is really, really nice. And again, you can get in here and you can tweak the thing to death, but that's what it kind of, that's what it sounds like on a vocal.
No reverb delay. Okay, there it's on a vocal. Now on a snare or an acoustic guitar, did the same thing. I have a uh, an acoustic guitar here set up with a with a send to an acoustic guitar reverb. And again, I went through, I picked his acoustic guitar, I believe it was acoustic guitar room two, and I tweaked it a little bit, just meaning that I put it on as a send, I turned the wetness up to 100%. And again, when you first pick one of his presets, which I'll show you right now, just so you can see this, although you might have seen this on other YouTube channels, but if I just show you what happens when I drop this on, um, put a second instance of this thing on, um, now, see everything defaults to zero, and no matter what preset you pick, the CLA preset, if I go over to guitars and pick a Goose of Guitar Room 2, everything set at zero, the faders, and then it's set at 40% mix. But when you put it on as a send, you would turn this up to 100%, at least that's how I use it, and therefore now you got to turn down all the faders. Or you could, I guess you could also just keep it at the standard 40, 50%. But I, I think typically that's used when you're doing it as an insert. You know what I mean? But either way, it's just a different workflow. However you're used to it, it doesn't really matter. So basically what I did, remove that instance, is I set it up at 100% wet dry. And then I just turned down the faders, picked his thing and tweaked it. So in this particular one for guitar... Okay, so we're using three delays here. We're using a tape delay. The second one is muted. They're using a slap, and he's using a crowd delay on tight, okay? And that is, none of that stuff is being routed to the, to the reverb. It's just going directly out of the output. On the reverb, we're using just number two, which is a room, and number four, which is a little bit of space. And I just blended it to taste. So you have the option to either route the delay through the reverb and then out, or just route it to the output. And it's a little bit of a different sound depending on what you want to do. You want to experiment with that. So here. So if I want to mute the delays, and just listen to the reverb. Just the room. And here's the, the space. So there's the two reverbs together. Now, if I bring the delays back in, I think he had delay, I don't remember which one it was now, I believe it was one and four. Okay, now again, putting it into the mix, what does that sound like? I don't know, let's listen. Where will my heart come back to life? Of the vocals. Really, really great, really usable. Right? Again, really usable. The presets to me are really, really great here. And I've only tested out the CLA ones, and so far I haven't found a bad one in the bunch. Again, the only difference is, is I've turned everything up to 100% mix and then lowered the faders and brought it up to taste. But using the using the ones that were picked for the preset and the ones that were muted, I left alone just to test things out. And to me, that's a sign of a really good um, plug in here is that the presets are really, really usable. Um, and again, because now that you have everything in one plugin, you can do things a little different. Typically, I would never put two delays into two different reverbs on an acoustic guitar. We normally just slap a reverb on it and be done with it. This gives you a little bit more um, control and gives you a little bit more you know, sound options that you have here, a lot more soundscape options, which is great. Um, on a snare drum, let's listen to it on a snare as well. So again, same thing, I set it up as a scent and I sent the, the snare there and here it is. So here we go, we solo up our snare. 
Okay, so we started off with with that. There's the dry snare. Okay, I picked the snare top preset that he had. Again, 100% wet. This one, there's no delays, only reverbs, but all four are being used. Okay. I mean, that's just the preset that all I did was turn down the faders a little bit on each individual reverb, left everything else the same, and it sounds great. Now, one little thing that I also learned on over at, at uh, Warren Hewitt's Produce Like a Pro channel, when he reviewed the, the CLA um, Epic, as he said, one trick is done on the reverb before the CLA Epic, put the CLA Mix Hub and use the, the snare top one preset, which is right here, and use that. And it gives that, even enhances the snare even more. Let's listen, it's bypassed right now, I'll bring it in. Didn't change anything, this is just the preset. Kind of gives you that bigger sound. Again, there's no EQ, no compression on any of this. It's just running through the console and a tape machine, by the way. There's no compression, no EQ on anything on this mix at all, which is so you're listening to really raw tracks. So with the CLA Mix Hub, that's before, after. So let's bring it back into the mix. Much, you can always lower the if you want. Before, after, back in the mix. Sounds great. Sounds really great. A lot of possibilities with this. Again, being new to this and only playing it with a little bit, just using the presets and tweaking it and just kind of poking around the plugging, you can get some really great usable sounds. Um, this is something that will, will open up your ideas and the way that you use reverbs and delays because it's so convenient to do it inside of one plugin. It'll give you some a lot of different ideas that you may not have thought of, things that you may not typically do. And this, again, apparently is the way that Chris has it laid out on his SSL. He has four delay sent returns and four reverb returns. And during the course of his mixing, during, 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 during different sections of the song, he will automate those things, push them up, ride them, bring them down. And you can do all of that here in automation. The one thing that this thing would be really cool, what you miss here is the ability to put, like he does in real time, put his hands on all the faders at once and bring, bring them up or put them down or put his fingers on two delays and one reverb, three at a time. You can't really do that here all at once. You gotta kind of automate each one separately. Although I have seen a YouTube video, and again, I, you may wanna search it, where I guess there's an iPad app that you can use in conjunction with these plugins to be able to have these on an iPad and use that like physical faders. It would be really cool if you had like an eight fader hardware controller that you can hook up to this particular plugin and do this tactile feel. That may not be, you know, cost effective, conducive, whatever, maybe too expensive. Nobody may buy it. I don't know. But I think that would give you really the way Chris does it is real with his hands on. Here you gotta kind of do it, you know, with automation. But again, you might be able to get the iPad app and work around it somehow. Or maybe there's a generic hardware controller out there that can be hooked up to this. I don't know. But that was my first thought. So it would be great if I could put my hands physically on all these faders. But what again, what I really love about it and what's really unique about this particular plugin is that I have yet to see a plugin that does something similar to this where you can actually route delays into reverbs and to have four different delays, four different reverbs, 
all tweaked in with the presets to the way Chris actually uses them based on his hardware units and then all the extra level of control. This can be as complex or for someone like me, as simple as possible, just picking a preset and tweaking it and it really can enhance and give your mixes sense of better depth and space than what you would have had if you would have just, for example, put a simple plate reverb on a snare drum. You can do that here, but I think it's a lot more interesting to use some of his presets and incorporate the four different reverbs together or in some instrument, like the acoustic guitar preset where you have a couple of delays going into a couple of reverbs. That's something that I typically would not have done. And I got to think a lot of people wouldn't even have thought of. This gives you an opportunity to kind of expand the way you think about using reverb and delay. So I think for 29 bucks, this is absolutely a home run. This is one of those plugins, again, it's different than what most other plugins out there are like. It's not just a simple reverb and delay. And that's why I think it's cool. And I didn't mind at all paying $29 for it. So depending on you, when you're watching this video, it could be a $200 plugin now, or they always put, Waves always puts their stuff on sale. So even if you're watching this six months from now, and this is 200 bucks, you wait during the course of the year, you'll be able to buy this for $29 at one point or another. And I would recommend at the very least that you demo it and see what you may be able to use this for on your mixes. So I hope you found this video somewhat helpful and informative and you enjoyed taking a look at the CLA Epic. Again, there's tons of videos on YouTube that went to much greater depth than I did, but a lot of my followers wanna know what I think of these things right out of the box and what limited time I had with it. I like it and I think it's very, very useful. So um, I wanna hear from you below. Let me know, do you guys like this one? Did you check this one out or did you just download the free CLA Echosphere that came out on Black Friday, which was a free plugin to anyone, which is kind of like the mini version of something like this, which is just one reverb and one delay, not four of each. Um, let me know what you, if you like this, if did you try that plugin out, what do you think of this? And what do you use for reverbs and delays in your mixes? Do you think this thing is worth taking a look at? I'd love to hear from you. And again, don't forget to go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com, get your free mixing course right on the homepage. And again, if you really wanna learn the craft of mixing in a very non technical way. You may also want to consider checking out mixingmadeeasy.net, my mixing membership website. Again, all the links will be in the description box below. And until next week, I've been Dave with homerecordingmadeeasy.com and mixingmadeeasy.net, and I will see you next time. Take care, everybody.